Today is the 28th of May 2018. This is the Kalavai Venkat podcast. Our topic is the dumbest Christian argument ever. Every Christian argument is dumb, but the dumbest Christian argument ever is also the most frequently heard argument. Christians think it is convincing. Any time you invoke an embarrassing fact to criticize Christianity, Jesus or the Bible, a Christian would respond as follows. He would first attempt denial. He would outright deny the existence of the embarrassing fact. After all, in Christianity, there is no commandment against lying. So a Christian does not hesitate to indulge in the Christian variant of the kia. If outright denial is not possible, the Christian would argue that you have misinterpreted the biblical verse. There is nothing to interpret in the Bible. It was the first dummy's guide ever written. Christian teachings are simplistic and meant for the simpletons. There is nothing to interpret in those teachings. The Bible must be read literally. This Christian tactic does not work if you are an informed critique. In that case, the Christian would attempt a diversionary tactic. He would divert attention to your religion. If you are a Hindu, he would abuse Hinduism. Of course, that means Christians have no defense against the critique you have leveled against Christianity. Many Hindus do not realize this. They instinctively start defending Hinduism. By doing so, they play into the hands of the Christians. They allow the Christian to wriggle out of the tight corner. They allow the focus to shift away from the embarrassing details about Jesus, Christianity or the Bible. This diversionary tactic does not work if you are a smart Hindu. A smart Hindu would respond, Let us pretend everything you say about Hinduism is true. You set up a separate debate on the topic of Hinduism and I will discuss it. Today, we are talking about Jesus. Are you afraid that you cannot defend Christianity? Has your God forsaken you just as he forsook Jesus on the cross? Listen, if you admit that you cannot defend Christianity, then I will not embarrass you any further. However, if you think you can defend Christianity, do not attempt diversionary tactics. A Christian is denied all escape routes when a Hindu responds like that. That is when a Christian attempts the dumbest argument ever. He argues as follows. Christianity has been around for 2000 years. It is very resilient. It is still growing fast. If Christianity is really as bad as you say it is, how could it have survived this long? Therefore, Christianity must be true and beneficial. Why is this the dumbest argument ever? Let me give a few analogies and you will know why. Analogy number one. Islam has survived for 1300 years. It is quite resilient. It is still growing fast. Therefore, Islam must be true. How many Christians are impressed by this argument? How many would accept Muhammad as their prophet? How many Christians would convert to Islam and chant Allahu Akbar? I would presume none. No Christian would think that Islam is true or beneficial just because it has been around for 1300 years or it has been resilient. No Christian would think that there is any correlation between how long Islam has been around and whether it is true or beneficial. He would be right. Analogy number two. Judaism is older than Christianity. It is still alive even after the Christians exterminated 6 million Jews under the rule of Adolf Hitler. By the way, Hitler was a Christian who admired Jesus. Hitler followed the teachings of Christianity and exterminated the Jews. Christians persecuted the Jews from the earliest days of Christianity. They sent the Jews to the ghettos. Christian Nazis finally exterminated 6 million Jews in the 20th century when Hitler came to power and collaborated with the church. Yet, the Jews have been highly resilient. In spite of the Holocaust, Judaism is still alive. Jews walked out of the death camps and won the Nobel Prize in Sciences. They became chess champions and bankers. That is quite some resilience, isn't it? 
However, no Christian would think that Judaism is true or beneficial just because Jews have been super resilient. In fact, if they thought so, then there is no need for Christianity to replace Judaism at all. A Christian would argue that there is no correlation between whether Judaism is true or beneficial and how resilient the Jews have been. He would be right. Analogy number 3. Cockroaches have been around for 320 million years. They are also very resilient. They can withstand very high levels of radiation. Cockroaches have survived nuclear catastrophe. They survive at very high altitudes on Mount Everest. That is quite some resilience, isn't it? So how many Christians think that cockroaches are beneficial? I would presume none. I would guess that a Christian would kill a cockroach if she spots one near the kitchen sink. Her action would be justified. Cockroaches are vectors of diseases. A Christian knows that there is no correlation between how long cockroaches have been around or how resilient they are on one hand and whether they are beneficial on the other. She would be right. I must make an important observation. I do not want anyone to equate Christianity with cockroaches. There are some exceptions among cockroaches. Some cockroaches are beneficial. The rhinoceros cockroach of Australia feeds on dead leaves and barks. It recycles decaying matter. It is beneficial. On the other hand, Christianity is entirely harmful. Viruses and bacteria are very resilient. They have been around for billions of years. Some are beneficial, but most of them are lethal. We do not think that malaria, AIDS or tuberculosis are beneficial because the germs which cause those diseases have been around for billions of years. We do not think that those germs are beneficial simply because they are resilient enough to mutate and adapt. I can add any number of analogies, but I guess I have made the point. Christianity does not become true or beneficial just because it has been around for 2000 years. Its longevity simply proves that it has adapted to the environment the same way a lethal virus adapts by mutating. That is why Christianity is a mimetic virus. It survives by destroying the host. Its teachings are harmful and immoral. Christianity only thrives because there are enough charlatans who spread it and enough gullible people who uncritically follow it. The Bible informs that Jesus is a thorough racist, a heartless fellow and a genocidal maniac. Let us look at an interesting episode narrated in Mark 7. In that episode, Jesus is a quack or a faith healer. Once a pagan woman brings her sick daughter to Jesus. She pleads with him to heal the child. Jesus refuses. He says that he would only heal the people of his own race. He calls the people of other races dogs. The woman is desperate because her child is dying. She has no choice other than accepting the canine status which Jesus had bestowed upon her. She begs that even dogs deserve mercy. Only then Jesus relents. Look at this episode in today's context. If a white doctor called a black patient dog, he would lose his license. He would be hounded out as a racist. Ironically, Christians worship a racist. The book of Revelation informs that Jesus would torture non-believers for five months on earth. He would then commit a massive genocide of non-believers. Jesus would make other genocidal maniacs like Hitler or Stalin pale in comparison. Nobody worships Hitler or Stalin today, even though the Christian church declared Hitler a son of God and a brother of Jesus. Unfortunately, billions of Christians worship Jesus even today. We do not take kindly to those who eulogize Osama bin Laden. Why should we take kindly to those who venerate Jesus? A believer harms himself and society by following hateful teachings. Christianity is full of hate and vile superstitions. The Christian mimetic virus warps the worldview of a believer. It destroys their good qualities and therefore harms them and society. It is only because of Christian teachings that Europeans committed the Holocaust of 6 million Jews and half a million Roma.
who are also pejoratively called the gypsies. It is only because of Christian teachings that Europeans committed the genocide of Native Americans. It is because of Christianity that Africa and India suffered a series of exterminations during the colonial loot. Christianity, Jesus and the Bible are evil and immoral. This is the truth which a Christian must confront. The dumbest Christian argument ever cannot insulate a Christian from confronting this reality forever. Thank you for listening to the podcast.